Arthur, uh, just a quick question for you. What is the meaning of life? Uh, donuts? Donuts is close. The answer we were looking for is, I don't know. Uh, but I intend to find out, and I think that this video game might be the thing that does it for me. <laughs> I think that this video game, The Talos Principle, am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Let me go through these data logs real quick, because I know what makes for good video content, and that is robot hands reading some old emails. Uh, the the Talos Principle, it uh, fairly recent game. I guess we're a little bit late to the late to the Talos Principle party. Came out last week. Okay, well, uh, I did my best. Is a really neat puzzle platformer philosophical uh, game from Crow Team. Uh, yes. who you might know from the equally philosophical uh, Serious Sam series. Yes. Uh, that's kind of a tongue twister. Here, uh, Robo God is purging the world. I don't know. I don't think I'm deep enough in the Talos Principle to uh, truly understand what's going on. There's a robot god, or maybe an AI god, or maybe it's just regular old god. Uh, who is watching me solve these puzzles. I guess it's like... He does go by one of his names, which is Elohim. Right. Um, which is, I believe, Elvin, or no, it's Hebrew. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a. Uh, you, you have obviously finished the game. I'm about uh, an hour or two in, which um, is about a thirtieth of the game. Holy shit balls! Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of puzzles. It's a lot of uh, principle there. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, very. A lot of time to explore the philosophy, I suppose. Here's me not figuring out how these connectors work. Um, it's it's a puzzle platformer with a lot of uh, really cool mechanics. Obviously, like I haven't been playing that long, and it's already sort of thrown a bunch of different stuff at me. Right. Uh, so this is a, a tool that I just unlocked by completing other puzzles in the game earlier on uh, using a fairly rudimentary. I mean, it starts out fairly simple. Um, a lot of the puzzles early on are solved using these things called jammers, which disable uh, certain devices like sentry guns that will mow you down uh, if you just run in front of them. They also disable barriers like that. But here I've just unlocked this new mechanic, the connector, where you actually have to draw uh, lines that connect uh, uh, different devices to different power sources. And I get a, tetra a, a tetromino for that, Yes, uh, which is helpful, which is sort of how they gate the other parts of the game. Um, so yeah, like in, in this video, actually, I unlock another tool also, which layers an, a new mechanic on, and sometimes those mechanics will be, you know, you'll have to deal with two or three of them at the same time, uh, in, in a single level. Here I'm just running around, just exploring the landscape. This uh, beautiful, beautiful world. Yeah, that I don't really know jack shit about at this point. It's a, it's a really interesting game, and you can probably speak more to what's going on behind the scenes it's it's very intriguing obviously you're a robot i'm guessing or you're a human with robot hands so i haven't seen the rest of my uh rest of my body so if you hit the h key it actually pops out to third person oh you see what you look like i'm guessing it's robotic you are you are a robot okay confirmed confirmed um, here so, so one of the, the really interesting things about this game is that Crow Team are the ones that, that made the game. And obviously, like, if you played Serious Sam 3, it's clear that this is the Serious Sam 3 engine. Yeah. Like, this is very much that, even if it's very pretty and very sort of peaceful for the most part. Uh, but it was written by a guy named Tom Jubert, who you may recognize as the creator or the writer of FTL and oh. also The Swapper. Okay. Uh, so it's very consistent with uh, with that guy's work uh, in those instances. Um, and I, the way I described it to a couple friends uh, a week or so ago is that it, in a lot of cases it feels like having a conversation with a philosophy major that doesn't want to make you kill yourself. Yeah, sure. Because um, um, it's very grounded. Like there's a lot of like audio logs because there's a, a running narrative of a – uh, a young woman who is working at like a an artificial intelligence research institute or something like that, and it's right. actually like a, a a good character. Like it's it's a well written character that gives you some like level of insight to some of the deeper message of the game that doesn't isn't like completely inscrutable. Right there, and there are, are multiple mysteries in play when you start the game. Uh, sure, the most basic being. What are you? Yeah. Uh, where are you? Uh, and very quickly, it, it starts to to ask the question of what happened. Yeah. Like in, in 
and there's a really cool uh there are computer terminals all over the place which is sort of how the game delivers its uh i don't know it's audio log or not an audio log but just like sort of informational payload um sure. this puzzle takes me a uh, humili i've talked a lot about how i hate doing puzzle games in these videos because it, like watching it is like humiliating yeah. Um, this is actually kind of a cool mechanic, though. And in the last puzzle, we saw something, too. Like, I feel like puzzle games like Portal have, have done stuff like this, where it's like, connect the dots, connect the, the, you know, target with the energy projector, and that's how you get past it. And that last puzzle, you saw you can actually use the connector to connect multiple points, not just, you know, yes. one line to another and use it to, like, refract it. You can use it to, like, spider it out and, and connect you, multiple things. You really have to do it. That's one of the things that it does later on in a very sort of Nintendo fashion that you have to mix and match what you understand about the different tools to right. get the job done. Uh, uh, and here you're learning one of the quirks, which is that red light and blue light colliding will either completely deactivate the light if yeah. it's at an angle or it will uh, allow one light precedence over the other so yeah. you can't just hook up one light to two sources and have it do all the work for you i'm just like watching this and it's like come on dummy yeah i know exactly like how to solve this puzzle and well listen to you listen to listen to puzzle what did you go to college for puzzles maybe um i I, I think one of the, the interesting things about the game is that the puzzles do like follow a certain kind of logic and, and once you, I think it does a good job of teaching you how things work and like ways to think about stuff, yeah. but you will definitely get stuck or I definitely got stuck. I haven't gotten stuck for too terribly long though, which I, again is like, I feel like the hard balance that puzzle games have to try and swing sure um of, of making it challenging but not like impossible it's the same like this might be heresy but i've never gotten like so deep into like a mist game like obviously the original was a classic and everything but i don't go back and play it for jollies because like right. a lot of that stuff is just like this isn't this isn't even close to being intuitive but it's, it's the adventure game sort of thing right yeah or like they're not intuitive puzzles um, um but now that i know like sort of how that uh, once I figured out that last puzzle, right, I think it really helps me out in this one, which, like, bing, bang, boom, like, yep. just like that, uh, yep. figured it out. So, I don't know, I think that that's a, the game does a really great job of creating, like, a pretty elegant balance for, for how its puzzles work. And it's interesting to me that you bring up Mist, because the other way that I've been describing it is very much, it's very much Mist meets Portal. Yeah. And it's sort of aesthetics and gameplay style. Like, there's this this abstraction of narrative that and like sort of having to figure out what the hell is going on in so many different ways um and it's also very pretty it's very serene which is a good backdrop for the profanity that it will likely elicit later on when you sort of get stuck oh see i haven't gotten there i mean no you you have so far to go i <laughs> know so what it, give me an idea of like how much more complex like what what do i have to look forward to um as i march through the hours by the way um, is, is there ever anything hidden in the world outside of the little puzzle rooms because i'm always running around exploring yes there there is it, i mean i the double jump power up is that somewhere out here sure yeah totally and then the the glide um you uh Whee. i mean first off there are three endings oh cool game. okay um and i and i won't explain how they work because that would really spoil part of the game i think um, well i've already found the tower of babel which god said hey griffin don't climb that or i'll kill you right. so i imagine if i climb the tower of babel it's not the tower of babel it's some sort of bad tower oh this is another very simple puzzle that uh takes me about 35 minutes to yeah this will be the now, rest of the video by the way because i'm now, an idiot imagine one of these puzzles with like seven 17 or 18 pieces jesus christ um yeah it gets a little it gets a little much um I, what were we talking about? How it escalates? Yeah, tell me, tell me sort of, because uh, later in this video, well, I'm about to actually unlock the box, uh, which is another sort of neat, that's that's more of a platforming mechanic than anything else. Just move it to the right. Oh, Jesus. I, I think one of, the, one of the things it does is that there are certain tools that you'll find that are used in multiple ways. Okay. Um, so... And and all and actually, almost every tool you find will be used in multiple ways. Um, the I, I feel it's funny because talking about how to solve certain puzzles feels like a spoiler, almost. Um, there are certain puzzles that 
or, or certain pieces that you can use both to activate a a specific kind of thing in the world mm. while also serving a secondary function like the the light posts that you find the connectors yeah they connect lights but you can also set them down on top of buttons hmm. uh, okay to, to activate switches which will start appearing in the game now that you've found the box yeah i've noticed that you can also put the connectors on top of the boxes there that i actually really like the way the game is set up so far because everything's very uh compartmentalized um, I actually like that a lot in puzzle games because then there's no confusion of, oh my God, do I need to run into this place to get this thing to, in order to come back here? Like backtracking as a uh, game design trope is not my favorite in a puzzle game because uh, it's just it just creates way too many variables. So I like how compartmentalized it is. And it also gives you a very distinct like visual language of like, these are the tools that you'll be using in this, uh, in this you know, certain little compartment. Also the title of each puzzle alludes to its solution which yeah. i appreciate and it and it's a clever sort of thing um but uh but later you'll be using like five or six different uh tools in the same puzzle uh and some of those puzzles have like 20 or 30 steps that have to be undertaken Jesus Christ. um and there is actually a reset button for puzzles i don't know if you've used it yet no but, uh, i'm like you, sick at puzzles so i don't really need if you, a crutch you know if you hold the X button, it will actually reset a puzzle back to the beginning. And there are some where you can screw yourself. Oh like, yeah, completely. I can totally see that. I think I've actually uh, done that to myself. There, there are very few places where I think you can do that, but you can definitely do that. Um, uh, this takes me actually, this takes me a very long time to figure yeah. out too. Uh. You, you, you're constantly forced to sort of reevaluate what things are for. Uh, and like, I, I can't, I, I'm gonna, talk very briefly about a later mechanic uh so if you if that seems like a spoiler then you should plug your ears for like the next minute uh later on there are fans uh right that's actually that i can... think the next power up that i can unlock so one of the things that was an epiphany for me uh is that fans don't just work permanently they're not stuck permanently you can remove their fan blades and take those somewhere else, uh, which is, it sort of tells you right away. But the, the thing it doesn't tell you that it expects you to figure out, which took me longer than I'd like to admit, is that you can take a fan off of its base and set it on top of a button. So, okay. That seems so, weird. That, that, that seems like it leaves like a lot up to the player's imagination. I mean, but the thing is, you you can also take a jammer, which is the first tool you've gotten, and set that on a button. You can take a connector nope. and set that on a button. Uh, and eventually you really have to use all those things, all those tools uh, to pass levels. Hmm. Um, so, it, and it, later it adds a, a cooperative element to the game. Whoa, I spoil. jeez, okay. Um, all right. Where, you, where you're working with yourself. Okay, fantastic. I like yeah. myself, so yeah. that should make for I, I, I myself is usually pretty good at solving these I puzzles. I think this this will test the limits of of your self like Griffin. Okay, well, I mean, I don't love myself watching myself try and solve rudimentary puzzles like this. No, you're gonna need that box, you big dumb, you big dumb animal. Big dummy. Uh, anyway, let's not spoil anything else about right. the Talos principle. It's a it's a really neat game. I, I, I knew absolutely nothing about it. So um, I don't know, it was, it's sort of a refreshing surprise because I don't know that I've played a whole lot. I feel like last year was the year where I played a bunch of games like this and- Right, like you know, Annie Chamber, I've heard people- Annie Chamber, which of, I- like Mention of. Uh, I don't know, I think it's, I think Annie Chamber is far more abstract than this is so far. Absolutely. Um, but I've been I've been really enjoying it. So uh, it's out now. Do you know Do you know the the It's on Steam, right? Is it on GOG? Anything else? Uh, it's on Steam, and also there's a uh, a demo of of it on Steam, so you can try it out. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, extra challenges, like on top of these puzzle pieces, which you have to collect to move on. There are also little stars, like that one. I'm never. If you want the third ending, you will need to find all of those stars. No way, not gonna happen. Just like no, I don't even know how to get to that part of the environment. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Anyway, this is the Talos Principle. Uh, Arthur, thanks for joining me and thanks for watching, everybody. We'll uh, we'll catch you next time. It's my new tagline I'm working on. Keep working on it. A little mean. <laughs>